Okay, I have to be, um, kind of quiet because Cinny is in the other room because she called in sick from work today. But, um, uh, I, uh, let me pull up my script. This video isn't going to be like any video I made before. Like, nothing like this has ever happened to me. I don't even know how I'm going to format this video. Like, I'm just trying to get this as done, like, done as fast as I can because, like, I'm, like, this is, like, an emergency, but just trying to, like, spill my guts as fast as I can so, so that I can be safe and so that Cindy doesn't hurt anyone else. Um, I have a loose script here, but I'll probably ramble a lot due to how emotional I've been, so I apologize for any messy wording or anything, like, tangents. Um, Cindy's victim compiled a comprehensive document in the description, um, detailing everything that Cindy did with them. In all, in all honesty, I still don't know the extent of her actions. Like, yesterday on Twitter, I, ma I made a post being like, this was before I found out everything. I just made a post being like, hey, don't come for me because, um, I don't blindly support Cindy just because we live together and I don't know the extent of her actions. And I said I didn't know the extent of her actions. Well, I still didn't know. Like, I, I didn't know there was more to this. Yeah, I can't even look at the screenshots because I know, like, I, I can't bear to look at them. Like, it'll make me sicker than I already have been. So I'm just going to spare myself the gruesome details. Please educate yourselves for my sake, at least. J check the description, please. Also, I'd like to start this video by saying I'll probably be opening emergency commission slots soon, so please keep an eye on my Twitter. Um, if you want to help me get to a safe place, I've set up a GoFundMe. Um, I've never done this before, so I hope I'm doing it right. All expenses will go towards me moving to another place, and honestly, I don't even know where I'm gonna go. I don't know what the rest of my life is gonna be. I just... I am going to talk to my family later. I highly doubt I'll be able to stay with any of them because, you know, I I have nobody else. I, I have nowhere else to go. I have, I have Laurel, my friend Laurel, but she's in college and as soon as she gets out of college, she's moving to Japan, so she can't do anything. I'm fucking, like, flat broke right now. Um, I never wanted to say, like, where I was getting my source of income publicly because people have been getting on my ass for, like, ooh, you don't have a job, you're mooching off of Cine, which is all an assumption. Like, nobody has any concrete evidence of that. And although I did not have a job, no, I, I have not been mooching off of Cine. I have actually, like... I've helped pay rent every month, I've helped pay for groceries, I've given Cine money for gas, I've paid for a lot of her things, like, I have not been mooching off of her, but I was on SSI, Social Security Benefits, um, because I'm too disabled to work. I've been on these benefits since I was 14, and when I was a minor I actually received none of the money because it was given to my parents with the intention of, like, them using it to feed me and buy me clothes, and that's just not what they did with the money. And I've been cut off from SSI, like, four times now. And I got, like, they've been sending my letters to my parents and my grandparents, even though I keep telling them my address, and I've updated my address in the system. But they- I got no letters about, like, about what they've been doing. They just decided to cut me off randomly, and... And I didn't find out until, like, maybe one or two months ago when rent was due, and... Ugh, oh, I'm so fucked. Any- any amount of money is appreciated. Like I said, I'm fucking flat broke right now. Zero dollars in my bank account. I checked earlier. Zero dollars. Also, um, right when I got finished recording, um, 
Sunny said this to me when I went to check Discord, so yeah. But like, I need to get out of here. I, I don't feel safe here anymore. Public needs to know this information. Like, this, this is a public matter, and I'm gonna be the first to voice this publicly because if somebody else went first, everybody would go after me. And don't worry, I am, like, speedrunning this. I'm, like, going through this as fast as I can just so I can, like, just so I can, I can get this out as quick as I can, so... Just so everyone's educated. I don't support her, and I will never forgive her. I want this to be clear. She is never coming back from this, and I'm never going to see her the same ever again. She does not deserve her platform, and I don't think she should return to the internet. So, here's what I'm aware of. Cinny was in contact with a 14-year-old with the username Eno, and they'd been talking for six months. Cinny sent Eno porn, including sadomasochistic porn. She encouraged them to draw porn and would get upset when they wouldn't. She shared her sexual fantasies with them and did other things that I don't have the details of. And this was very recently. To my knowledge, she only stopped doing this three days ago because... Because Eno confronted her and told her that what she was doing wasn't okay. And it's not like this is the only time. Like, she has a pattern of doing this. But, like, it, she promised all of us that... After the peewee stuff, she would stop, and I never knew how bad the peewee stuff was. I just took her word for everything. But, um, the peewee thing is, um, almost, like, I think it was almost a year ago now, Cinny was in contact with someone with the username peewee when she was 19 and they were 17. And she did all of the same things, and, um, much to my disturbance before we moved in together, the, the PV stuff was going on like as soon as we were moving in together and I found out that Cinny had drawn a comic of me raping her in 2020 and she sent it to Wee right before we moved in together and I don't know why she did that. I don't know why like the timing I I should have seen that as a red flag but honestly even if Cinny like even if Cinny did something like really fucking evil, like like explicitly evil, I still would have moved in with her at that time because nobody else would take me. Cinny has intentionally downplayed the severity of her actions to me and hid things from me. Um, I had no idea about Eno. Like, I knew she was in contact with Eno, and I knew, like, Cinny, like, has sexual conversations with all of her friends, and I assumed that Enno was an adult, but they're not. I took her word on everything because I trusted her with my life. She has continuously befriended fans of hers and then immediately delved into sexual territory with almost all of them. She keeps doing this. She sent peewee porn after they'd only been talking for a week. I'm gonna be frank. Cindy's a groomer. She's a predator. All of this behavior is predatory, and she knew what she was doing. She knew how old Eno was. She would often, like, like call Eno, like, oh, baby Eno, fetus Eno. Like, she fucking knew sh what she was doing. She acknowledged everything she did wrong with Pee Wee and said it was never- promised it would never happen again. So the fact that she could acknowledge what she did wrong in that situation goes to show that she knew exactly what she was doing this time. Another thing, um, she has an obsession with Boy, a character um, belonging to Sock.Clip, who's also a minor. Sock has expressed discomfort with Cinny multiple times, and Cinny hasn't made an effort to change anything. She made graphic rape comics, including Sock's characters, and sent them to people she barely knew, who then leaked them because she didn't fucking know them. Sock expressed discomfort again, and Cinny doubled down and told Sock off because she can cope however she wants, I guess. Um, I haven't looked at the screenshots, this is- I've only heard, like, testimony of this, but it's disturbing. She has an obsession with Boy to this very day. Before I found out about all this, Cinny actually DM'd me last night and said, Oh, boy's yelling at me, because I think she has, like, an imaginary version of him? I don't know. 
and I was like, why is he yelling at you? And she's like, I don't feel comfortable saying. And then I found out from, from someone else what she did, and she just wasn't gonna tell me. With, like I said, with the NO thing, I had no idea about any of this until literally, like, last night. Um, and I cannot put my heartache into words. I'm kind of numb right now, so, like, I, there's not a lot of emotion in my voice, but I was up all night last night, crying my eyes out for several hours, and everything for, like... This shit fucking hurts. This is worse than, like, my breakup from 2021. This is the worst kind of betrayal I've ever felt. And I'm not even the victim in this situation. Like, this isn't even about me, but... Okay, I'll be honest. She has... With me, like... Now that I'm aware of the extent of her behavior... I've been able to reframe a lot of her actions with me, and I think some of the things she did kind of bordered on sexual assault with me. I didn't know the extent of her abuse. I didn't know what she was doing behind my back. I trusted her with everything. I felt safe and happy for the first time in my life, and she turned out exactly like the people who hurt me as a child. Eno is going to be traumatized by this for the rest of their life. I don't want to feel fucking sick. I feel like she's going to continue to hurt people unless I come out about this as fast as possible. Touching back on, um, Cindy's, like, sexual assault towards me, um, I'd like to preface this by saying this is going to get kind of graphic, so I'm sorry. On a daily basis, she, like, makes comments about my ass, like, how big and squishy it is, and how she wants a boyfriend with an ass like mine, and she would constantly slap it and grab it. And I'm gonna be honest, I consented to this because I've never had an IRL friend before, and I didn't know what kind of touching was and wasn't okay. And, like, I also consented to her, like, touching my boobs. And, like, I guess, like, this stuff is fine because I consented to it, but there's stuff that she did that I... I didn't consent to, like, she would often poke me, like, in the ass or, like, on my crotch and, like, make jokes about fingering me and, like, I told her not to do this and I said no multiple times and I would even, like, scream when she did it, but she did it even as recently as, like, a few nights ago, I think. I still have my doubts about, like, my feelings about this because, like, with that that thing, I didn't continue to say no, and I confronted Cinny about this, and she said she thought I was joking when I said no, which I have a recording of, but I'll, I'll show the recording later. I just want to talk first. Okay, I forgot this. <clears throat> I forgot to say this in my initial recording, so I'm just adding this really, really quick, but, um... Sydney asked me to sit on her face one time. Okay. Um and and I declined. Okay, okay, that's all. One time she wanted to find a character AI adjacent thing that let her sext with the AI and her friends didn't give her anything, so she suggested asking her server. I told her she could if she wanted to because I was under the impression that her server was like 16 plus or 18 plus and that she was being responsible and she fucking knew what she was doing, but I only found out recently that I was 13 plus and I had no idea. She started sexting with the AI on a regular basis, like in the room with me. One time I was cuddling with her and I was on top of her and we were watching something while she was sexting with the AI. Um. I said something like, oh, your heart's beating really fast, you must be scared of whatever we're watching, and she said, oh no, it's for another reason, and I had to tell her to stop sexting with the AI while I was there. In fact, at first I wasn't aware that was what she was doing, until one point where I tried to look at her phone and she hid it from me. She has intentionally tried to cover her tracks so many times, and I'm not defending her anymore. I defended her before because I took her word for everything. I... 
I foolishly believed her about all, all of the lies she told, everything she was hiding from me. I knew she was messaging Enno, like I said before, but I did not know Enno's age. One time they were calling each other, like, in the living room, and I walked in and, like, Cinny hid their DMs from me. And I asked why she hid them, and she just told me she didn't want me to see, and I kept pressing about it, but eventually I gave up because I knew Cinny sexted, like, all of her friends, and I assumed Enno was an adult. <sighs> when I found out that Enno was only 14, I got so violently sick. I took one conversation for my happy ending to just be ripped out from under me. My friendship with Cinny was all a lie. The opportunity she gave me, her saving my life. We celebrated Christmas together, we celebrated Thanksgiving together. My whole family treated her like she was part of us. Even my parents. We went on vacation with family in Seattle for four days very recently. We raised two cats together, and I don't know what's gonna happen to them when I leave. Squirp loves me more than any cat has loved me before, and I know if I leave her behind, it'll crush her. Squirp has been comforting me every time she finds me crying over this. I can't leave her behind. I literally have her, like, laying on top of me right now because she knows that this is fucking me up. My grandparents paid to fly me and Cinny out to Seattle, and they don't even know her. They gave her $300 to, like, spend in Seattle, and they didn't even know her. They were so kind and generous to her, and she ended up being a predator. She fucking broke my heart. I had to talk her out of suicide recently when the first doc about her was made, and I cleaned most of the apartment for her while she was at work and I worked so hard on cleaning the apartment that I had sweat dripping down my face and just like dripping everywhere because I have a heart condition and like physical activity takes such a big toll on me but I did it for her because I wanted our our apartment to feel like home when she got back and I baked brownies for her with chocolate hearts and wings on them to surprise her because I I loved her and I didn't want her to die. I still- I don't want her to die, even now. Like, I don't even- I don't think I can even say that I hate her, but like, this changes everything. Our birthday is this month, and it's ruined. I haven't had a good birthday in my entire life, and I thought this was going to be the first one. But it, it's ruined. I'm turning 20, and I don't have a life anymore. Our friend Laurel was actually gonna fly out and visit us, and we were literally just discussing plans for it right before we were told what happened. And she had to cancel. Me and Cinny were gonna make a Tres Leches cake and decorate it because I always had Tres Leches on my birthday as a kid. She stole the life she gave me away from me. She saved me, and then she broke me. I'm in Missouri with nobody to save me. I don't know anybody here. I have nobody left. Cinny wanted me to be the uncle to her kids. I wanted to have a house with her. I loved her unconditionally, and I've shown her love that I've never shown anybody else. I loved her more than anything. I miss the Cinny that I knew. All it took was a five minute conversation and my wonderful best friend who saved my life and made me feel whole turned into a disgusting, vile creep. I miss her so bad. I wish I could just wake up from all this and go get ice cream with the real Cinny like I did every week. But that wasn't the real Cinny. It was a front she put up to keep getting away with taking advantage of people. And it hurts more than anything in the world. There are no words to describe my pain. I miss the Cinny that I loved so dearly, that I cherished, that I loved more than anything. I didn't know she was capable of this. I don't know why she fucking did this. She ruined everything. I'm not even the victim in this situation and I want to fucking kill myself. I loved her. 
I miss her. Why did she turn into this monster? I miss my Cinny. This is the worst thing that could have ever happened. I would like to make it a point that Cinny's main excuse for her behavior is her hypersexuality. And I'm hypersexual, so let's talk about this. In me and Cinny's case, we're constantly plagued by sexual thoughts and a higher than average libido. It's fucking torture. It's a result of our essay trauma and hypersexuality is a trauma response. Not everybody experiences hypersexuality the same way, but me and Cinny do. I have never done anything like what Cinny has done. I would never endanger a child just to get off. People with hypersexuality are never inherently predators. Cinny's predatory actions cannot be excused by hypersexuality. She's taking advantage of people who idolize her. Children who idolize her. She's only been concerned with her public image for most of this, and when people talk about these things publicly, it's sickening. When the first call-out document was made, which I will also link in the description, all she cared about was how it looked, not her own actions. I didn't know the extent of her actions featured in the doc because she downplayed everything and I took her word for it. I found out later that it's much worse than I thought it was. I feel so betrayed. I also have a statement from Eno, Cinny's victim. Here's what they have to say. Hey, hello, my name is Eno. I'm happy Jack would let me have a place to speak in this video. I'm 14 years old, turning 15 next month, and I was having inappropriate conversations with the YouTuber CinnyBear03, as you can probably tell at this point. All of my evidence is going to be in the document in the description. I'd rather not be putting my evidence in this video because the evidence itself is graphic and triggering for Jack, and it would be best if you looked at the doc yourself with precaution. All of this happened so fast, and honestly, I'm still processing everything. The reason I wanted to say something is because it felt like I owe it to everyone. Her audience, the people that she cares about, and her. I met Cynthia six months ago, but we only started to get close as of recently, because I made fan art for her. I've been a fan of her channel ever since I got into the animation meme community, so talking to her felt surreal. But I'm gonna be completely honest. I don't care how big her platform is, or about any of her content, or how much of a fan I was. Because I don't believe in any of that stuff. Outside of YouTube, she's still a person that I decided to talk to. I don't have a- <sighs> I don't have many friends. In fact, I only really have two. So when I started to form a bond with her, I started to see her as a big sister, or somebody I could look up to and tell things to. Because me and her have some things in common. I didn't mind the whole thing with Boy and Nightmare. I didn't mind talking to her about any of that stuff. I don't even think I realized the severity of it until somebody else told me it was wrong. Maybe I'm just having Stockholm Syndrome of some sort, but I want to believe that she's a good person and that she never wanted to hurt me in the way that she did. She never wanted to hurt anybody in the way that she did. Because we all know that she's smarter than this. She makes videos on people like this. I'm still trying to process everything, so for the time being, I'm going to remain by her side. Until I know what to do with myself. I haven't been able to sleep all night because I was crying and trying to figure out how, what to do and how I could fix it. I make everyone happy, but it's not my place to do that. She did this to herself. But honestly, I can't help but feel regret knowing that I did something that could impact her and what this will do to her channel and the people around her. <sighs> I don't know how I'm gonna handle this, but I'm going to do what I have to do because this is what feels right. <sighs> I'm so upset that I had to meet Laurel and Jack this way, but they are some of the sweetest and most caring people I have ever met. They are understanding and compassionate about their morals and what is right and what is wrong. Jack has developed so much as a person and it shines brighter than anything. I feel bad because I'm doing this before his and her birthday, <sighs> but this was so sporadic and it happened really quickly. I think I said everything. Hi, it's me again. Um, to end the video, I'd like to include a recording of the conversation where I confronted Cinny. Um, I want you to be warned, the recording includes a ton of crying and grieving and panic, so it may be emotionally distressing to hear. But I want to cover all my bases and make sure that I'm as delicate and thorough with this as I can be. So, here you go. So, um... I know what happened. What do you mean? Self told me. Oh, fuck. I it's okay. Here, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you what I know, okay? Self told me that you've been sending porn to Eno and she told me because I deserve to know. Uh-huh. And um you knew that Eno was fourteen. Uh-huh. 
I think this is very predatory. I don't support this and I don't condone this. And I, oh, fuck it. I, I noticed that you have withheld some information from me about like your behavior, because at this point it's, it's not a mistake. Like you, you can't just accidentally send a 14 year old porn. No, like, no, you can't. You have done, you groomed them. I'm, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. What you did was grooming. I, I, I can't. I can't support you in this. I in what? Just in the situation. I like your actions. Like at first, like from the information you told me, like I thought you were being impulsive and making dumb mistakes. But this is an intentional, repeated behavior that you have continued to do, and I, I'm not okay with this. And this whole thing has made me realize that you have been inappropriate with me, too. Wait, how? You know how I told you not to, like, like poke me in the butt or, like, on my crotch and you still do it? Oh, I... Wait, do I do it in the crotch, Ellie? Like, I don't know, sometimes. You oh. still make jokes about, like, fingering me and stuff, and you asked me to sit on your face that one time. Like, oh. that's not, like, that's a sexual situation that you were gonna put me in. Like, I I consented to it because I didn't know what kind of touching was and wasn't okay, but now that I'm, like, piecing, like, putting the pieces together, now that I've, like, stepped back and took in the whole view of the situation, you haven't you haven't been treating a lot of people right. Like, you, your hypersexuality can only go so far. Like, at this point, you're taking advantage of your fans, and you've taken advantage of me. And I'm going to be honest, Cindy, I don't want to live with you anymore. Oh my god. I. I... I'm sorry. I I just, I draw a line here. I can't have you doing these things with kids. I can't live with someone who is taking advantage of children. I can't. I don't want to anymore. But I don't. you still did, and that's the issue. You can't undo this. Like, you, you have done this with so many people, and I... 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 I, I it's okay. I just... No, no, no. No, I, 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 it's okay. I want to be better. I want to do better. I want to do You better. can't come back from this. I want to do better. You can't, you yeah, can't come back. Please. You can, it's okay, but no, Cindy. Jack, I cannot lose you. I, I don't feel safe here anymore <laughs> after learning what happened. I, dude, I was fucking crying my eyes out earlier when I found out what you did. Exactly. Broke my heart, Cindy, that you would do that. This hurts me, too. Jack, I'm so sorry. I don't want to do this again. It's already been done. The damage is already done. Jack. I- oh fuck, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to ever make you feel like I was taking advantage of you. I- It's- I, it's not about me. I know, and I know. I- I- It's- I just- I- When- when you- you've been doing this with them for months, too, and you lied to me about it. What do you mean? You would intentionally, like, hide from me that you guys were, like, talking about sexual stuff. You never told me how old they were. I, I told you we were being hypersexual with each other. Like, like, yeah, but you never told me how old they were. I, I thought I did. I, I thought I told you. And it, you said out loud that you're being hypersexual with a 14-year-old, and that was okay in your mind. When you said that out loud. I'm <laughs> sorry. No, I don't. I don't think that anymore. Well, then why did you think that to begin with? Like, I don't know. It was some sort of desperation for something familiar. Desperation? I, something familiar. Like, I don't want to do this anymore. 
I then then don't. I but, won't. I won't ever again. But I'm making a conscious choice. I don't okay. want to do it ever again. Cindy, I stopped talking to them for a while because I felt guilty, and I knew I shouldn't have done it. I, Cindy, I don't. I, I. You can't come back from this. I'm I so can't, sorry. And I'm sorry. Also, since you stuck around till the end, I've got a little goodie for you to hopefully get some of that sour taste out of your mouth. Um, s since September 1st, I was slaving away on a birthday animation for me and Cinny, but as soon as I found out what she did, I immediately dropped it. It was gonna be, like, a fully rendered, like, complete animation, which, like, I haven't done one of those in a while, and I don't want it to go to waste, so I'm gonna show what I had so far. Although, I'd like to clarify first that the animation is 16+, plus, just like all of my artwork, and contains suggestive themes. It's the Penny and Stocking transformation scene, but with me and Cinny, so like, you get it. Um, all of my artwork is 16+, plus, like I said, but I'd like to make it a point that this animation has a suggestive nature, so you know what you're in for, because I'm not a freak, unlike Cinny. Here you go. Yeah, that's how